Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to learn how we can get the data file from SFTP server and download the data file into Oracle Virtual Directory in OIC integration. And whatever data we have in the data file, how we can insert the data into a TP table. Everything we will learn in this video. This is the series two of this series related to the getting file from server. In the series one, we have learned how we can get the data file from server with the help of read file operation. And now in this video, we will use download file operation of FTP. Let's begin. So before going to a start, I, I just want to discuss about the requirement. So the requirement is very simple that we have a data file over server and we have to consume the data file into Oracle database. So now what kind of steps we need to perform? We will perform some steps. The first step will be adding the rest endpoint so that we can configure request and response payload. Why we are going to add request and response payload? Because in the request payload only, we will provide the file name and the file directory we have to read from server. And in response payload, we will return back the response of integration. Now next, we have to add the FTP adapter with the operation of download file so that we can download the file from F SFTP server into OIC virtual directory. Remember, in the operation of download file, we are not going to read the file. We are just going to get the file from server into OIC virtual directory, nothing else. With the help of a state file activity, we will read the data file. So here we will use read entire file operation of a stage file activity to read the data file. And then after we will use ATP adapter and a point so that we can insert the data into ATP table. So let's begin. So here you can see we have the data file. In previous video, I have already show you the data file, but let's see. This is data file and we have placed this data file over server. This is a SFTP server. This all are the data file and we have to read this data. What kind of error issues we will get, everything will explain and will so show you the solution for same. Let's begin. So first getting the data file from server, we required connection. So we have already created FTP connection in integration. We will use that one. FTP, ATP, all the connection we have already created. Now we have created a new integration I will use. I will select app driven so that we can configure request and response payload. So here I, earlier I given the name as this one. I will use same, just I will use the get CSV file from FTP less than 10 MB and it will be 02. So that instead of that, Have a space here. Now it's done. Create, create. So integration created. Now we have to add the rest endpoints. So here we will use rest endpoint so that we can configure the request and the response payload. So now I will provide the name as start rest. Next, here I will use get file select as post. If you have any other queries and want more explanation, you can just put a comment. I have already explained everything. I select this one so that we can add a request and a response payload. Now we have to provide the schema, JSON schema, so that it, it can define the request and the response payload structure. So in request payload, I will provide the file name and file directory. This, this value we will provide at runtime. Next, we have to provide a response payload. So again, I will select JSON and provide the response payload as status and message. Now done. So we successfully added the rest endpoint. So whenever we added any integration, we have one basic error related to the business identifier or tracking variable. So just move here, add tracking variable so that we can remove that error, save, and done. You can see we don't have any error now. Now we have to add the, the FTP endpoint to get the data file from server. So I will add FTP endpoint. Here I will use download file. Download the score FTP. This is the name of this endpoint I am providing. And now instead of read a file, I will use download a file. Download file and here we have to provide the file name and the directory. So this is the input directory. 
from where we have to get the file and this input directory is sftp directory and this is the download directory in oic oracle integration this is the virtual directory where we have to download so i will use this directory as tim and these two the directory and the file name we are we will get from the request payload but here it's request payload so just i will left it blank and next done now in the mapper of this download ftp we have to provide the value file name and the file directory as we know that these two we are getting from the server only You're getting from the request payload this is the file name i just mapped here this is the file directory i mapped here download directory i already given in the configuration of the endpoint and done validate Once mapping validated, close here. So now here we have successfully downloaded the file from FTP server into OIC virtual directory in this place. Now we have to read the file. For reading the file, we required a stage operation. So I will select this stage file. And here, here I will use read file stage. Next, I will select a read entire file as this video is for read entire file only. Next video, I will show you what kind of error we are getting in read entire file. Then for the solution of that error, we will use another oper operation. Now here we have to configure the file reference. So here, do you want to configure the file reference or provide the file name? So as we are going to read the file and we have the file name, whatever we are going to read, uh, we have already like file reference as in the download FTP, right? So instead of providing the file name, I will use file reference from where we will get the file reference response of the FTP endpoint. So you can say download FTP and response of this download FTP in, inside this download response ICS file. Here you can see we have the inside ICS, we have the file reference. I will drag this file here. So now you can see this is the from where we are getting, we are getting from the download FTP inside that we have all the response of that one and there we have ICS file and the file reference. Exit. Now next. So here while reading the file, we need to provide the structure that how what kind of file it is, how many columns are there, everything. So I have already created the structure file, simple file for the data file we have placed over server so that we can provide here in the integration. So I will use that one. And here I selected CSV as our data file is in CSV format only. So just choose here. This is a simple file I created. And here we have to provide the record and record set name. Now here I will use all the column as optional, but one call at least one column is mandatory. So I will use that one next done. Save. Now here we successfully able to read the data file from the OIC virtual directory and uh, the data file coming in OIC virtual directory from this endpoint only. Now we have read the data. Now it's time to insert this data into ATP table. So that's why we need to configure the ATP endpoint. So here we have ATP endpoint. I will click here. Here you can see this is the table name. I have already created the gross domestic product table. In this table name, this all are the column coming from the data file and with three extra columns that creation date created by instance ID, all these things. We have to pass here you can see right now in this table we don't have any data once the operation completed this table will have the data so the, here you can see we have to once we are going to perform insert operation we have to provide the schema and all, all the details so here if you will see let's use insert ATP and i will select the operation and operation as insert next here we have to provide the schema of the table so how you can identify the schema of the table so for identifying the schema of table, just execute the query, select a star from all object, where object name is equal to your table name in capital format. Once you will execute this query, you can see the owner is the schema. So owner is Fox. So I will select Fox, Fox schema here. So you can see here we have a schema is Fox. Now there we have to provide the table name as in the drop down table type, we selected the table. So table name we have to provide. So this is our table name. I will just copy this table name, search here, select here, and now import. So this table is imported successfully. Now you can see it asking for the primary keys. So as of now, in this table, we don't have any primary key. But while inserting the data, it's required as, uh, at least primary key in the table. So here I will select this SL so that this ATP endpoint will make this SL as a primary key. It will not impact in database. Remember, database table structure will be the same. Now done.
So here we added the ATP endpoint, and now it's time to provide the value to do to this ATP by mapping. So here, just click here. You can see. You can see here. This is the array symbol. It means that this array, this ATP can can have multiple records. As we know that the read file of a stage, we can have multiple records. So here you can see we have also the same as array. This record is the array type with the symbol. You can see. This is the same icon of this record. So I will map this array with array and the rest of, yeah, this array with array and rest of the column with the same column, whatever we want to provide the mapping. So let me add the mapping. Now I added the mapping and here you can see extra columns. What we added, we need to provide the value. So the create scan date, creation date, I will use as the current date from the function. So this current date, but if you will see this current date is the date as a date. Now we have to convert this date data type into a string. So I will use a string here. If your column have the data type as date, you can use the same. Now done. Here in the created by, I will use the integration metadata and in integration metadata runtime details we have invoked by and the instance ID we have same. So now I have provided the mapping, just validate and close. So we are successfully able to provide the mapping. So what it will do, it will first download the data file from server, read the data, whatever we have downloaded with the help of read a state activity. And then we added ATP endpoint to perform the insert operation into the table. Now, after that integration completed, I will provide the hard coded value as a success. You can add the logic of the exception handling and all. So just create here. Now use success. And in message, I will use creation. Now oh, done. I'll do it and close. Save. Now our integration completed successfully. It's time to run the integration. So let's go back by closing. Activate the integration first and run the integration. So once it's activated, we can run the integration. So here just click on the test. So in body, we have to provide the request below the file directory. And here is the file directory. I will just copy this directory and the file name. So here you can see this is the file name 2021 with less than 10 MB, 9.42 MB. I will select here copy and I will provide here paste. So once I will test what it will do, it will read the, the get the data file from server, read the data using a stage operation and with the help of ATP, it will insert the data into table. Once integration completed, we will get the response as success integration completed successfully. And here you can see we have the log message. And if you will check the table, this table will have the data. So once I will use the select a statement, you can see this table have the data. So data inserted in the table from the data file present in the server. So this is the simple way we can uh, we can insert the data into table. We will again get the data file from server. But here we have one issue. So as I told you in the integration, we use a stage read entire file action. And we know that read entire file action have the limitation of 10 MB. If data file size is more than 10 MB, it will not read the data. It will throw an error. So here you can see in the server file, this 2021 file is less than 10 MB, that is 9.42 MB. And here you can see this 202 file has the size as 70.6, which is 10 more than 10 MB. If we will provide this value, right? We will provide this data file integration to read this data. What it will do, it will first download the data. As we know that FTP download operation can download the data file up to 1 GB. So this part will be completed successfully, but in this part, read file operation, it will throw an error because the data file more than 10 MB cannot be reading read entire file operation. So here, if you will see, if I click on the test, it will show an error in this read file state operation. So this is the issue. Yeah, you can see read entire file, read file operation, we have error. This is the issue in with this read entire file operation. We can fix this issue by using the read file in segment operation. So in next video, I will show you how we can solve this problem.
Here you can see the X, if you will see the error message, you can see error occur as file size is 17.68 MB exceed maximum threshold size of 10 MB. So how we can achieve that kind of error? I will explain you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other issues or want to ask anything, you can make a comment or done. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you so much.